If you're a new 3D artist, an experienced artist using Cinema 4D, or just haven't yet switched to using Houdini because you feel it's too complex, there's actually an exact reason for that. And if you stick with Cinema 4D, you'll eventually run into the same problem I did that made me wish I had switched to Houdini earlier. In this video, I'll show you the real secret of why most artists eventually outgrow Cinema 4D and end up switching to Houdini, and why, if you're watching this video now, starting today with Houdini might just be the best decision you can make. So who am I and why should you listen to me? My name is Will. I'm a professional 3D artist and a recovered Cinema 4D artist. I've spent the last eight years working in 3D and the last four years doing so with Houdini. I've completed shoe launches for Puma, schedule release videos for the PGA Tour, championship hype videos for ESPN, and freelanced at day rates that are double what most artists are able to charge. But more importantly, I learned Houdini the hard way so you don't have to. And now I'm sharing all my secrets with the hope that it helps even just one of you watching now. So before I can show you why it might be in your best interest to make the switch to Houdini today, we need to define a few terms. And those terms are simple and complex, meaning the words themselves. If we're gonna be using these words today, it seems our great responsibility to first be on the same page about what they mean. So let's begin. When we think about a 3D program being simple, there's actually two things we mean when we say that. The first being simple, or the first concept of simplicity, we'll define as a decrease in the number of actions required by us to reach our goal or the decrease in the number of actions required for input to be made and output to be executed. This simplicity could boil down to the number of buttons you click to get your final result. So a simple software might have you click only four buttons to set up a quick render. And the second definition of simple or this same concept of simplicity will also define as a decrease in abstraction between the input action made and the output or resultant action executed. This simplicity boils down to the actions you take being closer to the actual output actions being completed by the software. So rather than being hidden and masked behind buttons or icons, your exact input is the exact action the software performs. Now that we've defined simple, let's take a look at complex. Now, complex might be thought of as the opposite of simplicity, but it can be better defined as the discrepancy or the difference between how simple you expect something to be and how simple it ends up being when you start working with it. This might seem like a subtle difference now, but by the end of the video, I promise it will make sense. So the greater the difference between these two of one, how simple we expect it to be, and two, how simple it actually ends up being when we experience it, the more complex it feels. So if you're a 3D artist coming from a program such as Cinema 4D, you might feel that Houdini is more complex because you're just expecting a different type of simplicity. Now, this doesn't really mean anything yet, so to see exactly what this means for you in practice, let's think of a different but similar example. Let's say instead of thinking about making renders and scenes with 3D software, we just want to think about making a cup of coffee. If we think of two ways we can make this cup of coffee, we could choose one, using a Keurig machine, or two, using a French press. Now let's take a look at these two ways to achieve our goal of making coffee, and we'll see the input actions we take versus the actual output actions made. Now, to make the coffee with the Keurig, we'll need to do three steps. And we can think of these three steps or three actions or three input buttons that we might be pressing. And that would be one, add water, two, add the K-cup, and three, press the coffee button. That's all. These three steps would be the only input we need in order for this action to be completed. 
and then the Keurig machine would perform the rest of the instructions for us. In this case, the input actions have been simplified for us to have it be fewer steps that we need to take. And then the Keurig machine translates those few actions into the many actions needed to actually make the cup of coffee. So the button we pressed would tell the machine to power on, measure the water, heat the water, start to drip the coffee, measure the water as the coffee is being made, and then shut off the machine once we have a full cup of coffee. And then after all the output actions had been completed, we'd reach our final goal of having a cup of coffee. In this case, we can see that although our input actions did result in the coffee being made, the difference between what we did as input and what the machine chose to do as output was hidden from us. We can't see how it translated this input to the output actions. So in this way, we can say that the Keurig machine has abstracted these details away from us. Now let's take a look at this same goal, but this time if we used a French press. For this, there'll be more steps we need to complete or many more input actions we need to take, but in this case, there's no longer anything hidden from us. We see our input and the exact output it causes. As we measure the water, the water is measured. As we grind the coffee beans, the beans are ground. And as we start and stop pouring the coffee, the coffee is poured and then not poured. In this case, although the list of actions might be a bit longer, we now have 100% clarity on what is happening and what is actually being done to make the cup of coffee. So in this situation, we would say that none of the details have been abstracted away from us. We have full clarity and full control over the exact steps that take place. Now, if we zoom out and look at these two examples side by side, we can see the difference between them. And with our goal of making coffee, we can see how that can be accomplished. With the Keurig, we have fewer steps to complete, but many details are hidden from us. And with the French press, we have more steps to complete, but absolutely no details are hidden from us. Now comes the interesting and exciting part. Let's say our cup of coffee we made was okay, but maybe a bit bland and boring. And now that we have a love for coffee, and we've had this same boring cup of coffee every day for a few years, we now have a desire for a better cup of coffee. Let's say we have a more refined palate after having this boring cup too many times, and this time our taste in coffee has matured. Let's even dare to call ourselves coffee artists, and our goal now is to make the greatest cup of coffee the world has ever seen. To do this, Let's brainstorm some ways we can try to get this coffee to be better. So to improve in our coffee making skills, let's start thinking about ideas we can change to get this cup better. If the cup of coffee was too bitter, we could maybe change the temperature of the water we added. Or we could make the grounds more coarse as we grind them. We could mix two types of coffee beans, or even three or four, if we wanted our own perfect cup. We could let the water sit with the grounds for more time or maybe even less time. There's probably dozens or hundreds of things we could choose to do, but the key idea here is that to get better coffee, we'll want to control exactly what happens in the coffee making process. Or in other words, we'll want to have exact control over the output actions that are taking place. So. Let's now think about how we can make this new cup of coffee with both our Keurig and our French press. If we used our Keurig and needed exact control over the output actions, we'd be stuck because the Keurig has abstracted or hid these specifics from us. Our only option here would be to jump through the menus and the settings on our Keurig machine. Maybe read the manual and then hope that whoever programmed the Keurig machine happened to make the buttons and menu screens in ways that made sense to us. And if there was a bug in some of the Keurig's code, we'd be stuck and would have no idea what was going wrong. And eventually, we might be limited by the Keurig machine itself, because if there was no setting for changing the water temperature, for example, we just wouldn't be able to do it. And on the other hand, 
if we were to use the French press and wanted the exact control over the output, we can see now that it's incredibly easy to do because our input actions are the exact same as our output actions. We just need to do exactly what we want to have happen. So if we want to have the water a bit hotter, we might just leave it on the stove for another minute. And if we wanted fewer grounds, we could just add fewer when we measure the grounds ourselves. So now let's revisit our two definitions of simplicity and see which way of making coffee we would prefer. Our Keurig we can say is simple because we have fewer actions to perform to get our results. But our French press we can also say is simple because the exact actions we take are the exact actions that are performed. So our decision to choose which coffee machine to use comes down to making the decision of which simplicity we'd prefer working with. And if our coffee taste has matured enough for us to want to try to make the world's greatest cup of coffee, we'd also have to decide which way we'd rather try and make that cup of coffee. And this idea here is the exact same way as to how Cinema 4D compares to Houdini. They both are simple, but we just have two different types of simplicity. So our decision when choosing to use either Cinema 4D or Houdini comes down to this same cup of coffee. If you want simple buttons to click, a quick and easy make coffee button, and lots of struggles figuring out the coffee machine as you embark on your artistic journey of making your dream cup of coffee, then maybe the Keurig machine is the best option for you. But if you've outgrown your boring cup of coffee and you now want to experiment as a coffee artist with your newly refined coffee palette, then forget everything you know about the Keurig, focus on just the coffee itself. And maybe the French press is what you should be using. Now for your too long didn't watch. Most artists, myself included, outgrow Cinema 4D because they've become limited by the abstractions that Cinema 4D provides. Instead of their input actions and ideas, directly translating to the output actions and result of their renders, their scenes, and their 3D projects, they spend more time fighting the software, trying to get it to do what they want it to do, instead of working on their actual ideas. And eventually, they want to experiment and try more complex ideas but they quickly find out that the software wasn't built for that. So for me, at least, my time using Cinema 4D was like using a Keurig to try to make my dream cup of coffee. As I wanted to experiment and refine my coffee taste, there was always a clunky machine in the way of me actually working with the coffee grounds, the water, and the coffee beans. I felt disconnected from the art I wanted to make, and creating art felt more like finding the right button to press instead of actually making my ideas come to life. So if you watching this video now think that even one day you might want to try and make your own greatest cup of coffee, improve on your own recipe, and not be limited by software, if you think that eventually you'll outgrow your Keurig machine and want to experiment on your own, with full control and without a clunky machine getting in the way, then forget everything you know about the Keurig, focus on the coffee itself, switch to the French press, and I encourage you to give Houdini a try. The sooner you get started with Houdini, then the sooner you can bring those ideas to life. And those ideas that you have in your head right now might not even be that far away. In fact, they might only be six weeks away. If you want my help learning to brew your own dream cup of coffee with Houdini, then click the link below and I can guide you through that over six weeks. And if you've already started learning Houdini, but wonder why you still feel stuck, then watch this video next.